Welcome back to Sip to Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to talk a little bit about defense. The Baltimore Ravens are coming off an impressive 37-3 win versus the Seattle Seahawks, who at the time was in first place in the NFC West. Uh, now they're tied with San Francisco 49ers for that same spot. But I was looking at the stat sheet and just in awe of how we dominated them statistically. Uh, held them to 20 I'm sorry, held them to six first downs. Um, we had over 500 yards of offense, rushed for 298 yards, threw for 217. Uh, Lamar was efficient, I think over 80% passing. Just a total domination. Had uh, Geno had another interception, had multiple sacks, just complete total disruption of the Seattle Seahawks. But again, looking at that stat sheet, what really stood out to me and what I always look for apart from time of possession when I look at stats is third down efficiency. We held them to one of 12 on third down. One of 12. And so what I did in this video is I pulled five of those plays and I'm going to actually show you the one that they got. And that was a situation where we were, we kind of gave it up, so to speak. We didn't challenge the play. But um, I'm going to show you the one they got. But just I'm going to look at four other plays and show you what we did to just basically challenge them on every third down. Now, yeah, we won on first and second down in some instances and put them in third and long situations, but that's part of it. But anytime somebody goes 8% on third down, that's amazing. 8% on third down, six first downs total. That's crazy. And just to, just to throw it out there, we had 29 first downs on offense. They had six. None by penalty, five by passing, one by running. Roll the intro. All right, welcome back. Now, before we get started, if you like the video, don't be afraid to smash that like button. And if you have not subscribed so far, consider subscribing. And when you do subscribe, hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of these videos drop throughout this 2023 season because it's a magical one so far. I hope it continues to get better. But let's get into the film. On this first play, I'm going to have a little description for you. So it's third and 11 on the um, negative 46 for Seattle. And that blue line indicates where they got to get. So we're really trying to play the sticks on this. And initially what you're going to get, you're going to get Roquan, who's kind of looking like he's going to blitz in that wall. You know, and Mike has done a good job assimilating these pressures. He's going to turn and wall off JSN. So JSN is going to run this little slant route because it looks as if it's open pre-snap. And again, Mike does an amazing job of showing you one thing pre-snap and giving you something else post-snap. And the players have bought in and learned however he's teaching it, the terminology or whatever it is. But right now, it looks like that little slant route is open. JS, I mean, and JSN can maybe can take that, maybe make a guy miss, and get that first down. So initially, I'm sure this is Geno's first read. But that's not what's going to happen. Roquan's going to come out of there. He's not going to blitz. He's going to wall that, he gonna wall JSN off and go hug him up. So we're going to take, take the initial number one away. Then you're going to have the two safeties to squat. So you're going to have Hamilton and Geno Stone, Geno Stone, they're going to squat at that first down marker. They're going to squat at that first down marker. And then you got your safety in the middle. It's going to play the deep middle if there happens to be a deep middle. And in this case, that won't be a deep middle player. Well, a deep middle threat, so to speak. Ball snap. You see Roquan walling it off. So he takes that away. That's the first read. Look at Geno. Geno's looking right at JSN right now. He's looking right at him. Roquan's taking that away. Roquan is taking that away. So now he got to come off of it, but look at the pass rush. Look at the pass rush. The first read was taken away. He, look, the pass rush is starting to get home. Now, he, no other outlet. Where, where else he going to go? Everyone's covered on the back end. The pass rush is starting to win. He initially stepped up, yeah, but where can he go? Look at the coverage. Look at the coverage. Roquan has JSN in clamps. The two squad safeties, you know, so if, if, if JSN wanted to try to Drift away from Roquan, Kyle's there. Or if he wanted to drift that way, uh, Geno's there. 
that's covered. So if they ran a post, you got your safety in the middle. If they try to do something over there, you got the safety back there. Everything's covered. Then you look back here on his back end. I mean, these guys back here eating. Got Gino running for his life. So again, defense locked down. Great job. And end up with Matter BK sack. You end up with a Matter BK sack. Cover sack that he is, but still, we'll take it. Matter BK is one of the league leaders, if I'm not mistaken. Put it in the uh, comment section how many sacks Matter BK got, because I don't know off the top of my head. Let's go to the second play. Now, this is third and 21. And again, we've won on first and second down. And actually, this the play before this, Van Noy got a sack. So that puts that's why they're in third and 21. And so now, look where the first down marker is. They got a long way to go. And, they, and you, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, it's easy to defend situations like this because it's third and 21. Well, hey, we got him in third and 21. We put him in this situation. It ain't like they did it themselves. They ain't voluntarily go for third and 21. We put him there. So why not put this on here? But, again, show him one thing, take it away. You're going to see Roquan going to shoot out of there. Um, who is it? Worley going to shoot out of there, and it's, it's going to almost look like cover two, but not really because everybody else is going to pretty much just squat. Everybody else is going to pretty much just kind of squat and hover. See, they ain't move much. The only people that had massive movement was Roquan and Worley. Nobody else really moved. They're really just trying to protect those sticks. So if you want to throw it intermediate, go ahead. And they're just going to tackle you. They're just going to tackle you. But again, at, at this point, you know, potentially he might could hit that guy in the middle. Maybe he could, he, he trying to hit that. Maybe. But then you got Van Noah coming again. This Van Noah gets the strip on this one. His only option was maybe that throw in the middle, but by the time he decided to pull the trigger, Van Noah is, you know, getting the strip. Now, he could have threw to that check down or this check down, but, hey, look where the first down marker is. The first down marker is here. We'll take that. We'll, we'll take our chances with making those tackles. We'll take it all day. So the only real option he had was maybe that throw right there because that's the only option I can see that he was trying to hit. But then with Vanoy getting the, the strip sack, we'll take that too. Vanoy's making hella plays, you know, from off the couch university. Let's go to play three. Now, this is the play they actually got the first down on. They actually got the first. This is their one first down that they got on this one. So they put Lockett in motion. But I, what I like about this is, and I kind of talked about this on Twitter too, like just think, I'm going to get off track for a minute. Think about replacing Worley with, Kyle, with uh, Marcus. So in all these situations, just think about replacing Worley with Marcus. And that's kind of what I was talking about on Twitter earlier. If you saw my, uh, me and Ken McCuse is kind of back and forth with what to do with, with Marcus. I'm sorry, what to do with Geno Stone when, when Marcus come back. Just replace Worley with Marcus. That's, that's all I would do. But I love, and the reason I said that because I love Kyle right here. Kyle can initially play this man or he can blitz. And so putting him in motion allow Kyle to creep. Now he can creep close to the line of scrimmage and go. He can go, but it turns into 3v3. And I'm going to show you the matchups. And they kind of crossed up now. See, that they kind of crossed up. This is why I was saying they out-leveraged us. Because look how far uh, Worley is off of um, JSN. And this is the matchup right here I'm talking about. This guy and this guy. Look how far that is. They don't need but four yards. All they need is four yards. They need to get to the 35-yard line. But because of that leverage and he inside, this candy from my baby and on any NFL team. And this is what I was saying. We actually gave them one. Like, this is this was their handout because they out-leveraged us. And he's just going to simply run out route. We're playing inside leverage. See how easy that is? That's candy from a baby. But Kyle still almost gets home. And swipes at it. Watch. Look at Kyle. Almost gets that. He almost, you know, almost gets that. But, again, because Geno gets it off and, you know, if we don't get it on this end up here toward the toward the line of scrimmage, this is too easy for any NFL player. Like I said, JSN had the leverage on the out. Kyle almost gets home. This is the one first down they got. Hats off them. They kind of caught us in a, in a bad call. It is what it is. Matter of fact, they didn't get it. He bobbed the ball. I'm wrong. He bobbed the ball. They should have got it. They didn't get this one. He bobbed the ball. I apologize. I popped, he bobbed the ball. I forgot the, I forgot about the bobble. I forgot. I tried to get him some praise and <laughs> put another failure on here. My bad. But, yeah, he bobbed the ball on this one. So they should have had two, but they didn't. Oh, well, he bobbed it. His fault. 
His bad. Next one. Try to give him a little shout out and they screwed it up. Sucks to be them this week. Third and fourth right here. This is another Chico, uh, Geno Stone production right here. Another banger. Again, they only need four yards. But what I love about it is this is either cover four and they run, they run and um, fade out, fade out. And this is either cover four or palms. I'm not really sure. And I'm going to try to explain it to you. So if this is, you're going to get those guys to drop out. If this is palms, and I'm going to see if I can explain it the best way I can. And you defensive gurus in the comment section, help me out. If this is palms, on the snap of the ball, Brandon, let me get my little arrow up here. On the snap of the ball, his eyes should go there. And his eyes should go there on the snap of the ball. Now, if he runs a, a quick out, which he does, Brandon should jump that. And then Gino should sink over top. Those are the rules for palms that I know. That I know. Which are similar to the same rules of cover four. But on cover four, both of them are kind of looking at this outside guy. And like I said, correct me if I'm wrong. Let me back up to cover four. No. Now, cover four, both of them kind of looking at this outside guy. If he stays vertical, Brandon Steven goes with him. If he, if, and when he does that, Gino would take the number two guy. But that's why I think it's palms because, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna tell you why. Let me get these arrows out the way. I think it's palms because when he does this, Gino squats on it. That's why I think it's palms. And then once Gino squats on it, I'm not not Gino, once Brandon squats on it, Gino Stone gets over the top. And that's where the interception comes from. All right, enough of that drawing. Let's see, let's see it in action. I see it. Slowing it down. Now, see, I think both of them are looking at that number two guy. I think. And see how he turns that out? And then Brandon Stevens just squats on it. So that's why I think it's palms. But even with that being said, uh, who up, whichever receiver this is, I can't really tell. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's JSN. Might be Bobo. But whoever this is, or it might be Lockett, they slow down. And when they slow down, they make it easy for Geno Stone to get over the top. Make it real easy. Because they don't run, they don't continue to run in the route. And Gino does what he does. Continue to lead the league in interceptions. So I hope I explained the difference between cover four and palms enough to where you can understand it if you didn't understand it already. They are very similar, but they just kind of it depends on who you're reading. And if I if somebody else learned it a different way, I'd be interested to know how you learned it and how you teach it or how somebody taught it to you. All right, last play. Third and nine. Um, again, we're going to talk about Geno Stone again. Another reason why we're going to have to find a way to keep him on the field when Marcus come back. Got to. He can't come off. This play bringing him in motion, and it's going to turn into um, man free. It's going to turn into man free. Those are your matchups right there. Geno Stone on the slot receiver. You got Brandon Stevens on the outside guy, which is DK. And you got, uh, I think this is Marlowe on whoever this is. I think that's Lockett. So those are your matchups. Again, you got them, you know, playing their press. Uh, Gino press and DK, I ain't really a fan of it. But watch how fast Gino gets from the, what's this, the 12-yard line to the 20, let's say, 2-yard line. Watch this. Quick out. He gets through the traffic. Bam. And holds him to a two-yard game. But I want, to, I want you to see it without me stopping it. See it in real time from this point of view. I ain't gonna, I'm ain't going to touch it. Come down here and don't miss the tackle for a, maybe a one- to two-yard game. From 13, how deep was Gino? Let's see how deep Gino was. Gino is what? Let's see. Five, ten, he about 12 yards deep. So when the ball's thrown, how deep is he? Let's see. Ball's thrown. He's five, about eight yards away from him. Maybe nine. Can't ask for much more. That's a one-yard game, man. Maybe two at the most. A one-yard game. For him to come out the ceiling like that is absolutely crazy. And like we've all been saying, the defense has been playing lights out. Pretty much the whole goddamn season. I hope that continues this week versus the Browns, but I really just want to to sh highlight those third down plays because third down is one of the ways you win the game. You win third downs, you 
I ain't gonna say you guaranteed to win the game, but your chances of winning go through the roof. You win on third downs, and we held those people to eight percent on third down, eight, one of twelve. And again, I tried to give him props to you know to be a little balanced in the thing, but I forgot he bobbled the ball. So on the video, they're zero for five. I didn't put the one they got in there, so screw it. FTML, film then more film. But again, that's the motto because <laughs> the film don't lie, unlike some people. And I appreciate you guys for coming through. Again, hit that like button if you like what you saw. If you have not subscribed, please consider doing so and hit the bell so you can be notified when the rest of these videos drop. And I appreciate all you Patreons for doing what you do. And I'm out. See you next time. Peace.